third video in a day. Look at me go. Hmm. Okay. I don't know what that was. I'm ashamed of myself. Hello and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is kind of a, like a to be read, a TBR, if you will, um, which I never do because I actually hate planning out like I have to read these books in a month. I prefer to just make book stacks. Like I'll just make a stack of books and I'm like, ooh, these are all interesting. And then when I want to read a new book, I look at the stack and I pick a book and I go, this is my book. Uh, but I thought for March, I would do a bit of a challenge. So in February, the challenge I chose to do was uh, I picked a week and I just read as many of books as I could in a week. And so I actually um, will be talking about that a little bit more in my February wrap up. So in March, I wanted to still do a challenge, but I wanted to try something a little bit different. Um, to read books off of my shelf, but instead of new books, I'm going to reread books. So I wanted to talk a little bit about why I think rereading books is important and then talk about some of the books that I plan to reread in the month of March. I'm not saying I won't read any books that are new because I'm weak and I know myself, but my priority, my focus for the month is going to be trying to reread the books in this video. And then I can, you know, maybe reread more that I don't mention or read new books in our first. I'm not really sure, but uh, yeah, let's get into it. First, I just wanted to talk a little bit about why I think rereading is important. So I think that there is this culture, especially in the book community, that we should always be reading new books because so there are so many books in the world since the dawn of time and there's always new books coming out and people want to know what is going to be the next best read, what is going to be made into a TV show or a movie, I've got to read it first, um, what is everybody else reading, I don't want to miss out on reading it so that I won't know what's going on and miss what everybody's saying about it. Um, and I, I just think in that we lose a little bit of the, the charm surrounding um, what it means to, to reread a book. So I, I used to reread books all the time. When I was younger, if I had a favorite book, I mean, I probably reread it once a year, sometimes more. And then the older I got, the more overwhelmed I felt by how many books I hadn't read. And I just, I didn't reread any books I owned for a long time. And then when I started questioning, well, why do I own books if I'm never gonna reread them? I started changing my priorities a little bit. And so I started adding in, one or two a year I would reread. I'd be like, okay, I'll make an exception out of all of the books I've read this year. This one is good enough to reread. And I just feel like it's kind of snowballed from there. When I reread a book, I remember where I first was when I read it. I remember the time of my life I was in when I read it. Sometimes I am hit by the same feelings that I had the first time or I feel like I'm picking up the same lessons and themes as the first time I read it. And then sometimes I pick up on way more. There are, are new things that I see because I'm older and have different experiences. Sometimes it's way more boring. Like <laughs> last year I reread The Picture of Dorian Gray and when I was younger I think I just kind of glossed over a lot of the philosophical parts and I was really interested in the story of Dorian and his portrait. And then when I reread it as an adult, I was like, I get it. I get it. Our souls are tainted. I'm so bored. I'm so bored. And then I felt like nothing even really happened with Dorian. So um, I ended up like getting rid of that book and I had kept it for a long time because I just remembered loving it. And then I was like, what is this? I hate it. I mean, I don't hate it. It's a good book, but it's not like as good as I remembered. So um, I have a lot of books on my shelf. A lot of them are books that I read when I was younger and haven't reread since. And some of them are books I've reread a lot. And some are books that I bought because I remembered loving them, but I haven't actually reread them. And so um, the more I've been like slowly decluttering my shelves, letting go of books that I know I won't reread, books that I know I won't read for the first time, or, and I'm really excited about this, I've been reading a lot of books that I've never read before and then assessing whether or not I want to keep them. And so I've been clearing space on my bookshelves and it's really exciting to feel like I know what I have. But with that has come staring at the books that 
I remember always loving. And I just have this urge to read them again because I want to connect with those feelings. I want to remember why I loved them. And some of it is just the pure um, relief of falling back into reading something you know you're going to love. You know that you're going to enjoy the storyline. And there's beauty in that. There's comfort in that. There's nostalgia to that. Um, and even if you are a younger reader or a less experienced reader, rereading books is a great way to engage your mind and help it learn book patterns. So the more we read books, we become familiar with the characters, we become familiar with plot, and it helps us understand the way other books work. And it actually helps build reading comprehension because it makes it easier for us to recognize the same patterns in the new books that we read. Um, and knowing why you love or connect with a book that you've reread so much can often help you become a better critique, like do a better job of critiquing a new book that you read because you can compare it to those like foundational books that you feel like really connect to your soul. So I don't know, maybe none of this is really scientific. It's just the feelings I have about rereading, but I think it's important. And I kind of encourage you like, go look at yourselves. What is a book that you haven't read in a long time, but in your heart you go, oh man, I love that book. And just reread it and remember what that feeling was because um I think like when Marie Kondo talks about what sparks joy books is always that category that I like get because books smart smart spark books spark so much joy for me so when I reread a book I'm reminded of the pure joy that can come from books they don't have to be boring or you don't have to always slog through them and they don't always have to be outside your comfort zone there is something to be said for that pure, visceral, joyful connection to what you are reading. And I like to be reminded of that because it helps me feel more in tune with what I'm choosing to read. And I spend less time feeling like I have to slog through things I hate because I can remember, no, this is not the feeling that I have with good books. That was the feeling. And so it helps me connect to that. Anyway, all of this long ramble to say, here are some books I'm gonna reread in the month of March. Oh, so let's see. I have a couple of like middle grade young adult books, some my books, and then some classics, um, surprisingly enough. So the first book that I plan to reread is called Seven Daughters and Seven Sons by Barbara Cohen and Bahia Lovejoy. Uh, the story is like this girl, she's like the seventh daughter. I think they're in... Yeah, it's like set in Arabia, or in, it says in an ancient Arab nation, one woman dares to be different. Basically, she pretends to be a boy and infiltrates or becomes a merchant. I don't really remember. I mean, I read this when I was like in middle school um, and I've had this copy forever and I don't think I've reread it since middle school. I just remember loving that whole trope of like a girl pretending to be a boy and then like she falls in love with the counterpart and he doesn't know she's a girl and I don't know I just love that trope of like they have to find out that they actually love each other um in the end and I remember really liking it but like I said it's been a really long time since I've read it I know it's probably going to be a short read um but I'm hoping it's as enjoyable as I remember it the next one is in a similar vein it's called Shadow Spinner by Susan Fletcher I know I have reread this since middle school um but it's been a long time since then still. Uh, the, the main character, she's a girl. She's in like, I think it's set in maybe Egypt, maybe not, but she um, is like a servant girl and her leg is, um, she's like, it, it got maimed when she was a baby. She can walk. It's just hard. It takes her a long time. And she ends up getting like employed as a spy and she's trying to go undetected and it's like her inner struggles and again I think there's a romance like I think she falls in love with the prince maybe or something uh again been a long time but I remember liking it again a whole uh like a whole secrecy thing like secret identity or secret subplot or whatever and apparently I guess I was really into that in middle school I still am so I'm excited to read this one okay the next one is 
very near and dear to my heart. It is called Mara, Daughter of the Nile by Eloise Jarvis McGraw. Um, I don't feel like anybody's ever heard of this book. I read it in middle school. I reread it in high school, probably in college, and I reread it like two years ago. And I was picking the other two off the shelf and I saw this and I was like, I have to reread it again. It's beautiful. Um, it's got it all. It's got uh, a main character who's a spy. It's set in Egypt. There's a prince. There's double crossing. There's, uh, you know, betrayal. I don't know what it is about this, but the romance gets me every single time. I just love the characters. I love the world. I fall into this book every time. Um, I guess it's a middle grade book, but it definitely feels a little more elevated. Like it does feel a little more YA, but not uh, not as like modern YA where it's all tropes and love interests and all, I don't know. I mean, it does have love interests and I guess it has tropes, but the vibe is just very different from a modern YA book. Um, I love this book. I am so excited to reread it. I kind of want to pick it up right now. Uh, I, I love this book. Can't say enough good things about it. I know they say don't judge a book by its cover. And I feel like all these covers have those like old nineties graphics, but seriously, just look at this cover. Look how beautiful it is, even if it's old. Can you tell I love this book? Okay, um, next is another, I guess it's, I guess it's a YA, I'm not really sure. It's called Dancer by Lori Hewitt, I think. Yeah, Lori Hewitt. I literally got this at the dollar store when I was like in sixth grade. It was in a like tub of books. They were all a dollar, as you can see, 97 cents. Um, it was in a dollar store called Dollar World, which doesn't even exist anymore. It wasn't Dollar Tree or the Family Dollar or anything like that. Like, it was literally called Dollar World. And I almost want to say it was like just a local dollar store. Like I'm not even sure it was a franchise, um, but it was huge. Like it was a huge dollar store. And I danced ballet for 10 years. So um, when I saw this, I wanted it because it was a ballerina and you know why not look at the cover it's beautiful um but the story is like she wants to go professional she is struggling to be able to um have a personal life and still be serious enough to become a professional dancer there's definitely a love interest i remember it being a little steamy i haven't reread this since i was in high school um but i know i definitely read it a couple times when i was in middle school and high school. And I just, I saw it on my shelf and I was like, man, I haven't read that in such a long time. But every time I look at it, I'm just transported back to those like romantic feelings. I guess there's a little bit of a trend here. I I think I've picked all romance novels in some way or another. So I don't know if that's fitting. I guess I should have done this in February for Valentine's Day, but maybe I'm just feeling the need to uh, have a little bit of pining and a little bit of romance in what I'm reading. And the next two books are classics. So the first one is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. I read this in high school um, and I haven't reread it since then. I like this copy of it. I feel like the, the font's a lot bigger. It'll probably be a little easier to read. The one I read was like this tall and the font was minuscule and I struggled through that for months. Um, but I think that now it wouldn't take me as long to read this, but I know that uh, Jane Eyre has a good amount of pining in the romance and boy, do I love a good pining trope. If the man is pining after the girl and she doesn't know and the girl is pining after the man and he don't know, it's my favorite thing in the whole world. So um, I think a lot of these books actually have a lot of that unrequited love and the pining that goes into it. Um, I'm starting to notice a pattern as I talk about these. So yes, classic, um, really excited to reread it. The next one is Persuasion by Jane Austen. And can we just look at how beautiful this edition is? Mm, I literally ordered the matching set with some Christmas money and they've all finally come in and I'm just obsessed with them. Uh, but I've been wanting to reread all of Jane Austen's novels because it's been a long time since I read them. And I wanted to start with Persuasion because again, pining and more pining and unrequited love. So that is what I'm planning to do. Plus it's one of the shortest novels and uh, a couple of other people I know have been rereading it. And so I just feel like I'm in the mood for that. All right. And the last one is not, it's not one book. It is the whole series. Um, and 
I actually read these probably two, two or three years ago. Um, I picked the first one after having a lot of people recommend it to me and I read the entire first trilogy in two days. Like I couldn't put them down. And then I read the duology, the second like series in the universe. Um, and this is the selection series by Kira Cass. I feel like most people know what this is. My best way of describing it is dystopian bachelor. So think like the hunger games meets the bachelor, uh, which I know is cheesy, but again, love triangle, pining, unrequited love. I mean, can you and princesses it's got it all and i'll just show you a couple of the covers because i just think man they're beautiful this is the first one the selection the second one is the elite the third one is the one because weddings <laughs> aren't they hilarious and then in the secondary series you have the air which honestly is probably my favorite cover because I absolutely adore the dress in this. I just think it's gorgeous. And then the last book in the entire series is The Crown, which I think is pretty too, but it's not my favorite. I love this series. I was really wanting to reread it. And uh, before we went into quarantine a whole year ago now, I didn't go on a panic buy for groceries uh, or toilet paper. I went on a panic buy for books. And so I bought the whole series and I was like, I'm gonna read this during quarantine. I'm gonna be home all the time. I gotta do it. And then I never did. And it's just been on my shelf. These are beautiful. I'm glad that I purchased them. I'm glad that I own them because I know that I will always enjoy rereading them. But I think it's a shame that I bought them a year ago with the intent to reread them and then just put it off. So I'm uh, making the whole uh, original trilogy and then the duology that follows uh, a different character in the same universe a priority to reread. So in total, I think that's 11 books that I want to reread in March, which is a lot, but it's definitely doable. And some of them, again, are shorter, quick reads. I'm sure I will breeze through this because once I start, I know I won't be able to put it down. And that is it. Those are all the books that I plan to reread in the month of March. Um, this may end up being all the reading I do, uh, but I'm kind of hopeful that I'll probably be able to fit some other things in as I go along. And there's other stuff that I'd love to reread. So maybe I'll pick up some of that if I just feel like I'm on a rereading train. So I will check in at the end of the month and see how I did. Um, if you have any books that you are planning to reread in March, please let me know down below. I would love to hear about it. Uh, but other than that, thank you so much for watching. Deuces.